Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about a new discovery of a star somewhere out there that actually possesses three interesting planets that we might be um, quite interested in studying in the future because they're very very easy to see and they're relatively close to our sun. Let's talk about GJ9827 and welcome to What The Math. <laughs> Alright, so the system we've discovered is known as GJ9827. It has a few other names, but um, what's important to understand is that it's actually relatively close compared to other stars. It's at a distance of about 99 light years away from um, our planet and from our star, which is, in relation to other stars, not that far. So, for example, uh, this right here is the distance of about 150 light years so we are looking at something around here it's basically within um, our kind of a local neighborhood of stars and what is interesting about jj9827 is that it is uh, relatively similar to our sun even though it's a, um, slightly less massive and it's uh, of a type known as k-type stars so if i were to create one right here and use our sun as the template all I have to do to convert this to GJ9827 is basically change its mass to about 67% of the mass of the sun. And so it's somewhat smaller, somewhat less massive, but it nevertheless is um, relatively sun-like. Now what we discovered is basically, and this has happened back in 2017, is basically three relatively interesting and um, relatively unusual planets that orbit around the star in um, in close proximity to it. The three planets we discovered are all unusual in that we don't actually have their kind in our own solar system and they're known as super Earths. So just for fun we're gonna place Earth somewhere right here just for comparison and let's now place those three super Earth um, objects. I'm actually gonna do random gas giants here. One, two and three. Now all three of them orbit really really close to the star. The first one, uh, known as GJ9827b, um, has a semi-major axis of approximately uh, 0.0211, which is about 2% of its distance of um, Earth to the Sun. And what makes it really interesting is that, well, not only is it actually hot and um, not only is it actually bigger than Earth in, in terms of radius, um, it is what we would consider to be a super Earth. So basically it's a kind of a planet that is larger in radius than our own planet Earth. But the mass here is not as dramatic. It's actually only about 3.74 masses of Earth. And we've only discovered this very, very recently by looking at uh, the way that these planets influence the motion of the star itself. So we actually did two observations. One of these observations, this is when we just discovered these planets, was when they basically passed in front of the parent star and we saw them basically dip in brightness. Uh, we saw the star dip in brightness. Oh no, my planet is losing a lot of stuff because it's too close to its parent star. I actually have to change the composition a little bit for it to not to uh, turn into a smoking pile of hot lava. So let's actually change its composition because currently it has a lot of hydrogen and in reality this planet really doesn't. As a matter of fact, we actually think that this particular object um, is probably really, really, really dense. It probably contains up to about 50% of mass as iron and the rest of the mass is essentially uh, silicates and maybe some other materials. Um, and this will actually make it a lot more stable. So let's just correct its mass one more time, make this 3.74 and its radius is going to be a little bit closer to about 62% uh, larger than the radius of Earth. So this is kind of what it actually looks like, with the exception of that big uh, collision event that happened. And there we go. So this is a lot more realistic. And so the total density of this particular object is about 4.85 gram per centimeter cube, uh, which is actually still lower than our planet Earth, 
But interestingly, this is one of the most dense planets we've discovered so far. This is our Earth for comparison. So it's uh, basically smaller in radius and smaller in mass, but higher in density. Uh, but this, uh, this is a pretty interesting planet. Um, and we think that it, it is probably uh, a solid object. Although it's quite possible that it does have some atmosphere on it, but uh, we're not entirely sure just yet. And I'll talk a little bit more about this in a few seconds. The second planet, known as GJ9827C, is uh, also more or less rocky. In this case, it's also a little bit green. Uh, and it's about 1.5 masses of Earth. It's about 1.27 radii of Earth. So once again, a little bit more massive, a little bit bigger. Um, and we think that, um, unlike the previous planet, it's probably not as dense. So density here is below 4. Uh, in terms of composition, it's mostly rock. Uh, there's a little bit of metal here, or possibly about uh, 12 to maybe even 20% of metal. Um, and it does have a little bit of volatile so-called um, hydrogen and possibly water molecules. And probably some other relatively uh, small or thin layer of atmosphere. And the last planet is the one that is different from these two because it's probably more um, of a gas dwarf. In other words, it's more of a mini Neptune. And so this is uh, GJ9827D. Uh, and as you can see, it's definitely a lot more gas uh, giant looking than the uh, previous planets. And in this case, it probably has a lot more atmosphere and definitely a lot more emissions, as you can see. So there's a lot of stuff coming out of the planetary atmosphere because it's basically being evaporated by the powerful star. Uh, but what is interesting here is that, um, well, okay, in terms of mass and radius, it's 2.38 mass of Earth and it's approximately um, 2.09 radius of Earth. Density is 1.4, so it is not a very dense object but it is uh, larger and more massive than Earth. But this planet is very different in terms of the actual atmospheric composition. Uh, here, you would expect to find a lot more water, a lot more um, possibly even hydrogen, uh, and a lot of other volatiles that you would usually find in, in a thick atmosphere. So most of this planet is probably just gas. In other words, it's uh, what you would call a mini Neptune, or in a sense, a gas dwarf. Um, what is specifically interesting to us um, about this particular system is that all three of these planets line up very, very nicely with the parent star. So they, they kind of pass in front of the star and you can see pretty much everything that happens um, in terms of them blocking the light, in terms of the molecules here that are coming off the atmosphere, uh, reflecting and refracting the light. And this is really important for us to study the atmosphere. So this right here is actually, so far, the best candidate we have for studying exoplanetary atmosphere, not only because the star is very close to us, but also because uh, these planets are orbiting around the parent star in a very, very interesting location. They're passing, they're basically passing right in front of it. Uh, they're also very, very close to the star, so it's very easy to see what's happening in terms of, um, for example, like right here, if I zoom in and I look at how you can kind of see a slight layer. Okay, maybe it's not very easy to see. Let me correct this. Here, maybe we can do it with this object. So, because it now has a little bit of atmosphere, uh, we can probably be able to see... Nope, still nothing. But anyway, right here at the line of uh, intersection between the star and, and the planet, you can kind of see a tiny, tiny layer of atmosphere. And using powerful NALF telescope that we are actually launching this year, James Webb telescope, um, we'll be able to not just see the atmosphere, but we'll be able to analyze what's inside of it and know almost exactly uh, what is or what makes the atmosphere in these particular objects. And because we have uh, three very distinct and very different such unique objects here, We'll be able to study their atmosphere, their emissions. Like, for example, we'll be able to see what this particular planet is emitting. And we'll also be able to um, potentially create a new hypothesis and new theory for how the other exoplanets behave in the proximity of their own stars. So in that sense, this is actually a really exciting discovery. GJ9827 and its three planets are very, very, very interesting to us. But one thing I forgot to do is to actually move them slightly, uh, move these planets slightly farther away 
from its parent star because uh, they are uh, in a slightly different position from what you saw in the beginning. There's actually some leftover dust there from this object. Um, so this is kind of what the planets uh, look like, and this is kind of what the system looks like. Let's accelerate time a little bit just so you can see a little bit better. And this is definitely going to be a system you'll hear about again in the future as we study their atmosphere. And you can see this particular gas dwarf is emitting quite a lot of stuff from its um, surface. And then in comparison to these three objects, this is kind of what our planet Earth looks like. So here they all are together with our Earth. Now, this is definitely maybe not as exciting as TRAPPIST-1 last year, but you'll hear about this for sure, because as James Webb becomes operational and as we start studying these objects in more detail, we'll actually be able to uh, finally find a way to study the atmospheric composition of various exoplanets and then make quite a lot of predictions about their habitability their temperature, and of course, the fact that maybe just maybe some of them might even have life on them. Other than that, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let's erase Earth from here. This is GJ9827, and it's three beautiful planets. I'll see you tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.